I'm Sandy Danik, president of Nebraska Right to Life, and I'm here with Mike Davis, president of Lincoln Right to Life, and we're going to talk about the Women's Care Center that is coming to Lincoln. So, Mike, I have been at the abortion facility since Planned Parenthood opened in uh, August of 1995. And it is so important that we have that presence there. We were able then in a few years to buy the house that was next door to the facility when they were on South Street. So we then tried to carry that effort when they moved to 48th and Old Cheney by having a presence there, renting you know some space so that we could be present. But now we're moving ahead in a, in a new direction. Right. And so as you know, we have rented the space right across the street from Planned Parenthood for the last two years. We, mm-hmm. Lincoln Right to Life, we were approached by a young lady who had worked for a women's care center that moved to Lincoln. Mm-hmm. And she's excited about bringing a women's care center into that facility. And so Ann Mannion, her president of Women's Care Center, looked at our building and she's excited about bringing the 33rd center in their network of 32 right now. And there are 11 states. This will be state number 12 when they move into the facility across the street from Planned Parenthood. So this is going to be a Catholic women women's care center, as I understand, right? Well, they don't claim to be solely Catholic. They'll ask anybody to participate in helping make this cause happen. They do get the bishop's approval before they even consider coming to a diocese. So Bishop Connolly has been approached and given his blessing that we have a women's care center across from Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. So what are the steps that need to be taken in order for this to come together? Because I know there's been You know, I, too, serve on Lincoln Right to Life Board. We've had many meetings, you know, trying to come together to find the best way for them to do this, giving up our space to allow them to come into it and do this. So talk about what the steps are that are necessary for them to come together with this project. So they need an estimated amount is $200,000. That would be for turning the facility that we're in now into a clinic, which would be a women's care center, which would be more appropriate for a loving atmosphere Mm -hmm. and the right furnishings and openness. And 20,000 of that, 200, is for signage. One of the things that they do is they're on a very busy street, which Old Cheney and 48th is a very, Mm -hmm. very busy intersection. And right across the street or right next door to a place that does abortions, which in this case is Planned Parenthood. So they're they're raising $200,000 for phase one to make this happen. That is quite remarkable. That's a lot of money, but I think we can accomplish that because this is a good pro-life community. But I'm always perplexed about what do they do that makes them so successful? I mean, do you do you know of the recipe that they are trying to accomplish to reach out to these women? Being next to or right across the street from a an abortion facility, mm-hmm. wrong door, and it's happened to us at Lincoln Right to Life at our facility. When I'm setting up for mass, people walk in, say, "Is this Planned Parenthood?" Oh my! Placing the centers right next to abortion facilities is all part of the Women's Care Center's winning strategy. Next door saves lives. And the reason that it saves lives is because. Often, women who find themselves in an unplanned pregnancy don't know that they have another option. The statistics are stunning. They are saving lives. Not only do more than 9 out of 10 women choose life, the abortion rates in the communities that we serve drop dramatically. So then they're looking for hopefully an alternative if they have a chance to pause. They say that they use Mother Teresa's approach. So they Mm. take them where they're at and they love them. And so oftentimes the women that come in to get an abortion don't know there's other options. Absolutely. I, I am always impressed 
with the method that pregnancy centers use, the support that they provide women. Because in most cases, you simply need to break down what are your issues? You know, what are the things that are causing you to think that this is your option? And many times it's coercion, you know, where we see parents or we see the father of the child or, you know, whoever in their life that has an influence in in them in any way will say, well, this is an easy out for you. You know, you have this abortion, your problem's gone, you move on with your life. But the pregnancy centers can take that further, sitting down with them and saying, what are your issues that we can help you with? It's just very uplifting. You walk away from there and you say, boy, they are making a difference in people's lives. One woman at a time. That's how we do it. One mom at a time, one baby at a time. If you can't save all the children, just save one. Just one. And so we take them one at a time. That's what matters. That one, that one person, that's who matters. That's how we measure success. And, it, and because of that, because of that model, um, word spreads. And there is that woman, and there is another woman, and there is another woman, and it has this huge ripple effect. But that's it. The only one that matters is the one who walks in the door. They categorize that there's four types of women that they help. And the first two types are the ones that would be coming to a Planned Parenthood. They're the Mm abortion-minded, then there's abortion-vulnerable, and then there's the happy mothers, and then those that are looking for support Mm -hmm. within the first two years, help with parenting classes, help with new furniture, new clothes, new baby items that they would get by coming in to get help. And so the first two is the ones that is the vulnerable, and those that are minded that they plan to get an abortion and they're able to get them once they see the ultrasound. So they really push the fact that it's walk-ins are welcome, free, free, free. So free Mm -hmm. pregnancy test, free ultrasound, free counseling, free help. What I am particularly impressed with is the free ultrasound. And I know that with fetal development education showing us that the heartbeat begins at 18 days, I would have to say that most people, most young women in an unplanned pregnancy would not know that. So having that ability to see their child and see a living human being has to have an impression on them. They're the most effective and largest pregnancy center in the United States, meaning that with 32 centers, last year saved over 16,000 mothers from going through with an abortion, 16,000. That's amazing. And those women who come in and get a free ultrasound, when they're laying on the exam table, they have a big screen TV right in front of them so that they can see the 4D of their baby. And they want to make sure they can hear, so they have good sound system to hear the, the heartbeat of that little baby that's their baby. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, it's a real person. With a heartbeat, they can see it and they can hear it. And so immediately, they fall in love with that. They know it's not a clump of cells. They see it as their baby. And so the one thing that they do is they'll give them free ultrasounds every week if they want it. Oh, quite remarkable. Isn't that awesome? In all the years that I was at the abortion facility trying to talk to these despairing women, I would say to them, If you could only see that child in the womb, if you could see that beautiful child that has that has been conceived, you might pause and think that there are different alternatives. And so once they see that ultrasound, like over 90 percent choose life. Absolutely. Uh, High 90s. The ultrasound machine. I know the Knights of Columbus have typically donated that in the past to other centers. And they will do that. So that's what we're here. working on is that the Knights of Columbus will come up with the $35,000 to buy the ultrasound machine mm-hmm. and that that would be our gift to the to the Women's Care Center. And is that an extension of the local Knights? Uh, yeah. So the, the Culture of Life Foundation is at the state level. Mm. And so then uh, Supreme uh, will match that 35000 So if we come up with locally 17,500, Supreme will come in with 17,500. And match those funds. And match those funds. So they have 10 units that they've purchased Knights of Columbus in the state of Nebraska. Majority of them are in Omaha. 
I'm glad to hear that because I'm sure you know, being at the abortion facility, as I have been for years, you, you know, this isn't just Lincoln people coming into this Planned Parenthood. Right. They're, they're coming from western part of the state. We're seeing them from all over the state. And so while we're just in Lincoln, Nebraska, concerned for what's happening, people in the, in the western part of the state ought to be concerned about what's going on here at this abortion facility and trying to support the Women's Care Center right to life in any way that they can because their people are coming in. And I, I'm not sure that people get that always. I think they think it's just a local problem. Right. I see counties with all kinds of numbers other than the letters that we have here in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. So it's not just Lancaster County that uh, are coming in. It's counties from all over. So Lincoln Right to Life, of course, would be giving up their space where they have currently been for the last two years. So so there's a space about a block north that we can still see Planned Parenthood will be nearby It'll have a lot better parking. We we don't have much parking at our mm -mm. building right now. On behalf of Nebraska Right to Life and Lincoln Right to Life, we'd like to thank you for your time. Join us next time when Russ Barger and Mike Davis will be talking with Tommy Taylor about his regret as a post-abortive father. God bless you.